You've certainly seen infrared goggles before, and maybe you've seen this scene in Predator, where Arnold covers himself in mud to mask his body heat and the light it gives off. But why is Arnold's body normally glistening in the infrared? What causes this phenomenon? Whenever we discuss some phenomenon, we almost always wind up somewhere in the quantum world. Because if you ask why enough times, eventually that's where you'll wind up. So it should come as no surprise that there's a bit of a quantum element to describe black body radiation. But luckily, we won't need to stick around here for too long. The first thing to tackle is to figure out what exactly is heat. I'm sure you've heard that heat is the kinetic energy of molecules or atoms within matter. And that's 80% of the story. But if we want to be a little more precise, we can say that heat is the excess energy that a molecule or atom contains above its ground state. This can be represented visually as changes in rotation, location, and vibration. These are all manifestations of excess energy. When we supply heat to something, we are simply forcing the molecules to undergo one of these changes. Friction is the interaction of the electrons between two surfaces repelling each other and thus moving them about. This movement creates momentum, or changes in kinetic energy, and subsequently heat. Now, we have to enter the quantum world. The electron and the electromagnetic field have a very intimate relationship. Bitch. Because the electromagnetic field is a manifestation of charges, and the electron has a charge, or its own magnetic field, changes in one directly influence the other. They're very much like a boat in water. The boat can't go anywhere without creating waves or ripples, and the more aggressive the boat moves, the larger the waves. Similarly, the boat can be influenced by waves as well. Therefore, whenever an electron changes its own magnetic field, be that by changing its momentum or wave function, it sends ripples or photons through the electromagnetic field. That is to say, a change in energy of an electron will always produce a photon. As we leave the quantum world, we keep this little factoid in mind. Changes in electron energy produce light. Blackbody radiation is ultimately the phenomenon we want to discuss today. And having learned that changes in electron energy levels produce light, we could hypothesize that maybe really hot objects glow because the electrons inside are changing their energy a lot. Let's see how that would work. If we visualize a simple model of an atom, we can see an electron whizzing about the nucleus. It exists in an orbital, and that orbital describes a wave function or energy state of our electron. As long as the electron is in that orbital, it has the same amount of energy. As one would imagine, it can certainly increase its energy by transferring into a new orbital, but not easily. An orbital describes a wave function, and waves are dictated by their boundaries. If we imagine a guitar string in a box and we wanted to change its wave function, we'd find unless the wave's nodes appear at the edges of the box, it will collapse. Therefore, only a handful of waves fit in this box. Our electron orbitals are the same. Only certain wave functions will fit around the atom, and each orbital and subsequent wave function possess a unique energy level. So our bounded electron can only change its energy in quantized amounts, and these changes in energy stimulate the creation of photons, or light. But how does heat play into this? An opera singer, singing at the right pitch, can cause a wine glass to break. Molecules naturally vibrate with thermal energy. Like the breaking glass, if a molecule vibrates with the right frequency, those vibrations can stimulate the excitation of an electron into a higher orbital. When this electron returns back to its ground state, it produces light. A vibrating molecule doesn't always vibrate with the right frequency to excite one of its electrons. But a vibrating molecule can vibrate against their neighbor and transfer some of their internal energy to them. This new excess of energy that was transferred can create faster vibrations, which in turn can then excite an electron. As we increase the temperature, more and more vibrations cause more and more excitation of electrons. Stronger vibrations also cause electrons to jump into even higher orbitals. Since electrons in higher orbitals possess even greater energy, when they return to their ground state, they emit even more energy. 
If we can excite an electron into a high enough orbital, at some point the light energy it gives off when it returns to its ground state will be in the visible spectrum. In matter, orbitals of nearby molecules and atoms overlap and create even more orbitals, or nooks and crannies electrons can occupy. So even though each orbital requires a specific amount of energy, there are so many of them that electrons can release a large variety of light as they transition around. So many that the light appears white to us if an object gets hot enough. That's the basic mechanism for most blackbody radiation in the visual spectrum. But there are a few more sources. Since the electromagnetic field is just that, a field, it has an orientation of where it wants things to be pointed, exactly like a magnet. In most places in the universe, the forces of the electromagnetic field are incredibly weak, but they exist. A lot of molecules are what we call polar. That means there exist charges at all times within its geometry. We'll visualize water for this. Water has very distinct positive and negatively charged poles. This means it's kind of like a magnet and has a magnetic field that looks like this. If the universe had its way, it would prefer for this field to align with its own. So there is a force that wants the water molecule to align a certain way. In order for the water molecule to rotate, it needs to act against that force. It needs external energy. So if we give it energy in the form of heat, it may rotate. And this rotation causes a change in the electromagnetic field, and thus a photon is created to mediate that change. But since these forces are so weak, the energy of the photon is very insignificant as well. Therefore, any time a polar molecule even ever so slightly changes its orientation in space, it produces a photon. But these photons are extremely unimpressive, and as far as we're concerned, contribute very little to what we observe as blackbody radiation. The other main source of light in blackbody radiation is from free electrons. When things get incredibly and stupidly hot, like in plasma, electrons realize there's really no reason for them to be sticking around this hot mess and detach completely from their respective molecules. When an electron isn't bound to an atom or molecule, they're called free electrons. Free electrons can carry as much or as little energy as they want. When bound to an atom, they could only absorb specific quanta of energy. As a free electron, they can absorb whatever they want. Free electrons fly about bumping into each other in the ions. These collisions greatly reduce their kinetic energy, or changes their influence on the electromagnetic field. This produces Bremsstrahlung, which is German for breaking radiation. This isn't that common on Earth because most of our electrons have a home. But some of the light from lightning is due to this process. Lastly, we should be asking, why is it called black body radiation? This is simply a name assigned to a theoretical material that could absorb every single wavelength. In reality, all materials either reflect or let some wavelengths pass directly through them. And since we associate the color black with the absorption of visible light, we call a material that could theoretically absorb all light black as well. So when we measure the radiation from an object, some of it is reflected and transmitted. But black body radiation is the radiation that comes specifically from the object itself. Therefore, when we heat an object up, more and more of that observed radiation comes from the object itself. And that is black body radiation. 